This is Kigi, which is a print-on-demand card game by Daniel Salas. Um, he also made Koi Pond, which is also a print-on-demand card game. Uh, Koi Pond is one of my uh, favorite uh, go-to card games to carry around with me to game nights and um, introduce to people. Um, so I want to look at some of his other games um, by this designer and see what I thought. Uh, Kigi is about uh, being um, painters who are commissioned to draw or paint beautiful trees. And what you'll be doing is you'll, everyone will start out with one of these um, trunk cards at random. And uh, you put it down, the rules say put it on the edge of the table, but, you know, uh, we like to put a little bit of a breathing room. The main thing with that is you don't want to be playing cards growing down past wherever the base of your tree is. So uh, logically, just don't ever, you know, put branches down growing below the ground level of your tree and you'll be fine. Um, otherwise, setup is basically after you've given everybody a trunk card. Um, if you're playing the advanced variants, you'll uh, pull out these commission cards. Uh, they're very clearly different from the branch cards. Um, they have text on them and little things telling you uh, scoring goals that you're going for. Uh, if you're playing the advanced version, you're going to shuffle these commission cards up and deal two to each person, have them choose one to keep uh, for uh, giving them sort of a goal to be playing for during the game. Or don't do that at all. Um, if you are doing that, you'll take any remaining cards and shuffle them back into the deck. If you're not doing that, just shuffle all of these into the main deck and you'll deal with them when they come up in the regular game. Uh, last thing you do is you'll take the deck of cards and you will set it out in the middle of the table and pull out three cards um, for people to choose from over the course of the game. Uh, if at any point uh, these commission cards are shuffled in with them, and if at any point three commission cards are out there, then they get wiped and removed from the game, and you do out three new cards. Um, so that's it. Uh, the way the gameplay works is on your turn, you will uh, take a card from the display and put it either on your tree or any of your opponent's trees. Um, and you will score points based on, um, how many contiguous, um, things there are running in a line down to the trunk of the tree. Uh, so like if I took this branch card with a purple flower and a pink flower on it, and I put it on my trunk that has a purple flower on it already, there's two cards here and... Uh, they form a contiguous line of purple to purple, so I'd get two points uh, for the two purple flowers that are on that line. Um, you'll notice that, like, like I said, when you're placing a card into your tree, you don't want it to grow below the ground level of your tree, and you can't cover up more than one card when placing it, and you can't cover up any features like flowers or bugs. Uh, you have to only cover up the edge of the tree and in doing so you would um, you'll be growing out your tree uh, so then the next player would get their turn and that comes back to me and on this next turn I might take this card and put it in my tree as such and now I've got three purple flowers in a contiguous line and two pink flowers in a contiguous line so that's gonna give me five points on this turn um, and the next thing I might do would be like playing this one. There would be one, two, three, four, five purple flowers and one, two, three pink flowers, which is eight points. And then there's also these two butterflies, so that's 10. Now, whenever you get 10 or more points scoring wise, you're going to have to prune the tree down. And that means you go all the way back as far as that contiguous line of scoring goes and take the cards out of the tree and you have pruned them and they go into your sort of personal pruning collection. Um, 
you only uh, since when you're playing cards into someone's tree, like you can play cards into your tree for points or someone else's tree for points. If you do that onto someone else's tree and it triggers a pruning, they keep the pruning cards. You don't get those, but uh, if you but you would get the points. Um, so it's just you only have to worry about pruning if you ever score. Uh, 10 or more points with a scoring uh, that happens at the end of a turn. Um, the only other thing that's happening in the game is if one of these commission cards came up in the uh, line to choose from. If you chose to take a commission card instead of a branch card, you don't play it on it. You don't get to play a card on a tree that turns you took a commission card. It might be worth points for you in the game and you just keep it here and have it out there. People can see it. Um, this one, for example, says you want to have the longest branch on tree, so that means you want to have more cards in a branch than anyone else at the end of the game. So you keep playing until uh, you end up using up all the cards out of the deck. Uh, once the last card is taken, that's going to be end of the game. Uh, you're going to get points on that turn, and then you'll score uh, any commission cards that you've got. Um, basically, if the thing that's on whatever commission card you have is true, then you get 10 points for that commission. Um, if uh, any other player has that thing instead of you, all that they have done is prevent you from getting those points. Um, and if there's a tie, then the person who has the commission card will get the points. Um, so like this one is fewest cards on tree. And my tree has no cards on it right now. So as long as, you know... There's no circumstance in which case I wouldn't get the points for that if this were my tree at the end of the game because um, even if there was someone else who had no cards on their tree, because I have the card, it'd be a tie and I'd get the 10 points. Um, that's it. And whoever has the most points wins. If there's a tie for points, then it's the number of red blossoms on your tree would be the tiebreaker. So... That's Kiki. Uh, we're doing a bit of a variant here for our two-player game, just to switch things up a bit. Uh, normally, uh, the way you would deal with commission cards is when they come up out of the deck, you can choose to take them and keep them out in front of you, and at the end of the game, if you have that, you get 10 points. Um, what we're doing is uh, there's an advanced variant where you start out with commission cards. You would draw two and keep one. Um, but we're doing something different from that even, which is we're going to keep both of the ones we took um, and we're going to keep them secret from each other. And also any commissions that come up during the game, we are going to, you know, you'll be able to see someone take it. But once it's taken, we're going to flip it face down. So it's going to be a bit of a memory element we're adding to the game. And the last thing we're doing is we're going to make all the commissions worth only five points instead of ten. Uh, just to see how that goes in terms of point balance. All right, so uh, let's get things rolling. Um, I will snap that up. Okay. So then this one comes out, yeah? Yeah, and I score points. I need to grab a thing to write points down real quick. So you scored two. Two. Yep. I'm going to take this one and score three. How? One, oh, two, yeah. three butterflies. Yeah. Yeah. way off to one side bananas on me here but yeah whatever three points um 
So is this like uh, Kodama in that you can't cover up more than one card when you place a card? Yeah, you can't cover up a feature, and you can't cover up... You can only cover up one card when you place a card. Obviously, once a card's been placed, that's not a thing anymore, because you could put things over the top of other things afterwards, but... Um, okay. And you can't dip below your tree line. Okay. Which I felt like I was getting close to here, yeah. but... Uh, I think you're okay. Yeah. Um, because what's really important is your branch, not your, not the card itself. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. What do I want to play? You could do more butterflies on my tree. Um, and color of flowers doesn't matter, right? So. Right, there's a, it's... That's just a different scoring type. So there's a purple flower and there's a pink flower. Oh, okay. So there are. So they are different. Yeah. Okay. Um, since I have a pink flower, so I was trying to s yeah. figure out if I could get both butterflies yeah. and flowers. Um. And on your tree, because I can play over there too. You've got three red. Three red, but those there aren't kinda... any of those out there. No. So. I think that I have to do this butterfly thing. Um, I'll just keep going in that direction. Um, so that's another four for me. start building up something else mm -hmm. I don't really have this one's got a lot of stuff going on it so I'll take it uh, if I went there I could have three points for dragonflies if I go here I'll get two points for anything else um, but if I do that that breaks up the red flowers so I'm gonna go here Tree looks kind of wonky, but maybe I can make it look a little bit better if I. Yeah. Well, you know, I had to cover up my little card with your placement, so it's just going to look wonky for right now. Yeah. Uh, well, rats. And I just score two of something. Doesn't really matter what. You can. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the uh, red one with the flowers on your tree. Over there with the, yeah, right there. Um, this is amazing. It's still on the camera, it is. Kind of like veer it upward. Yeah, yeah, just kind of point it upward it's, and you should be good. good. All right, give yourself four points. Oh. Have the most of them dragonflies. Bugs. Oh, bugs. Okay, dragonflies and butterflies. Um. I don't particularly care about those other things. I'll take that. Oh, I have the most branches on your tree. Well, right now I'm running with a big two. It's more than my one. Um, man, and now I'm in an even worse situation. <laughs> Like, even junkier than before. I mean, you can still take that dragonfly and get three points off of me. Yeah. You could take either of the pink flowers and get three points. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna put this purple flower on that card to break up your dragonfly chain so that... Here or here? Uh, I guess there. Pointing up. So that it's harder for you to play a second card. Take my three. Well, I guess we'll. I don't know. We'll look at that when it comes down to the place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
I'm sorry, what did I give you for this? I gave you four. You should have got six. Because the dragonflies made a chain as well. Oh, so thanks. I'm going to give you two more points. And I just gave you three, and that should have been three. That's fine. Okay. Uh, huh. Well, I could get... Seven points. Oh, no. Have the least bugs. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight. Eight points. Well, I mean, I guess I could hedge my bets and take that one as well. Well, it's my. I know, option, but, but like, if you leave it. Yeah. It's like. I mean, if I take it, then I'm effectively just nullifying you getting those points. Because then it's a wash if you do get them. And if you don't get them, then it's if still a wash. If neither of us take it, and there's ever three commission cards out there, they wipe and get removed from the game. So so I can either get points for dragonflies, which is two points. Yeah. Or... Uh, you get four points off of my pink flowers over here. Yeah, that's true. And it would end the red flower chain. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. That's not a bad way to go, to break up your red flowers. Yeah, this is still on camera. I think it is. Yeah, it's getting close. It's getting close. But as long as it points upward like that, it'll probably veer back in, if you're careful. So you get four. Okay. Um, two purple, one pink, two butterflies. Eh. So we're going to return to this real quick. I kind of like angle this one back. This one, like that, put this like here. Yeah. Maybe I can't. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crap. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Really nice if I could get a good card for a change. That's terrible. <laughs> Stop putting cards on my tree then. <laughs> like. Well, it's just that none of the cards that have come out have been good for my tree. Like, they've all been awful. Oh, it's got tons of stuff on it. Yeah, but it's a card where I'll get zero if I put it on my tree. Uh, yeah, if you put it on my tree, you'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, just... seven, eight. Yeah. Just completely miserable. Uh, wait, 9, 10, 11. No, you'd get 11. You'd... Oh, uh, no, you wouldn't. No, no, no. No, because the red don't score, score yeah. So it'd just be the purple, Eight. the pink, and the blue. Uh -huh. Oh, it's not even that. It's... Oh, one, two, maybe it is. One, three, two, four, three, four, five, six, 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 seven, eight. I count ten. This is, there's no dragonfly on this one. Oh, is there not? No. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, that's what I have to do. It's the only place that gives me any points, so... I mean, these would give you points eventually, maybe. Maybe, yeah. right? Like, great. Another card that's great for you and would have been good for me. Oh, my tree's looking pretty dumb. Uh, yeah. Pink and purple. We have one, two, three. So I'm going to do 12 yeah. by doing this, because um, there's a chain of butterflies, yeah. purple, and pink, and then I have to prune, Yeah. Um, which involves me taking every everything down to the trunk. Yeah, your entire tree. Like my whole tree gets cut down by doing that? Yeah. I'm okay with that. I don't know 
know if I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I feel like it's going to happen anyway. Shoot. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Burn the whole tree down. Yep. It's good. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have so many points that I'm never going to catch up to you. Ah, oh, spirit. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> here. Okay, I got four points. Uh, my goals are not feasible, so I'm not going to succeed at them. Um, so I could get no points or put it on your tree and get four points. Yep. Why <laughs> should trees suck? <laughs> because every card that comes out is bad for my tree, like... I'm going to take fewest bugs on tree and hedge my bets on that one. <laughs> and get more limbs out there for us to choose from. I guess just miserable. Take that one. Okay. Mm. Yeah, of course. I get six points. Yep. I'm putting it on your tree. Yep. Okay, this will do. One, two, three, four, five. Every time the good card comes out when you are drawing yours. Like, just completely ridiculous. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and. One, two, three, four, six. Things rolling down here again. <laughs> Two points. Disaster. Yep. I mean, uh, that's seven. Seven, right? yeah. Oh. 
happen. So I could do that and have no tree. That's the way to go. Work for me. Yes, 11. Okay. Most flowers on tree. Well, currently have a rousing rate of two. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, I guess we need to start building up other things. Do you have any flowers? No, oh, these are flowers. They aren't on that card. Ugh, that's true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just pink and red. Okay. Well, then I don't care about that. Um, let's get something else started. Let's go here and throw a... No, no scoring <laughs> lamb on my tree. Oh, what's this? Longest branch. Mm. Well, <laughs> working on it. Guess I'll go ahead and pick up a wild two points. Two points. Two points. Yeah. Oh, well, that happens. Yeah, right? Sweep. That's good. Yeah. I Means so we're that much closer to the game ending. And this is rad cards. Just toss them off to the side. Uh, okay, yeah, you took that and got two points. Um, uh, I get three points. Oh, good. F four points. Wait, yeah, four points. Four points. Two points or three points. I'll play out of your tree. But I think I'm not doing better over there. Um, um, I get two. So now we just draw from these from Yeah, we three. just finish off the cards. Okay. Well, Probably this. Yeah, obviously you're gonna take that. Like Unless it makes my it makes me cut my limb down, which I may or may not want to have happen for my cards. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'd get eleven, but I'd cut my limb down. Uh So, what else is there? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two.
clearly have have most limbs in your tree. Um, and the way it works is if we tied, you would still get it because you have the cards. So, okay. Like, I can't block you out of it. Unless you wanted to play some other variant where I could block you out of it, but we're not. So this is going to give me one, two, three. Because, like, you didn't leave me with the card that's going to improve my tree, are you? One, two, three. Hey, this is just going to be three points. Okay, well, three points it is. Three. Okay. okay. Uh, secret goals. How many flowers do you have in your tree? Well, like, what constitutes a flower? It's more than two. I get five six. points. All right. I get five points for the most branches. How many cards do you have in your collection? I think you probably have more than I do. Ten. Uh, we both have ten, so I also get five points for having the most cards in my collection. Okay, and I guess I get five points for having the fewest cards in my collection. Yeah. <laughs> that was a wash. <laughs> Nine, ten, yeah. Alright. Um, I have either the fewest or most bugs in my tree. Like, how many bugs do you have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I get five points for fewest. I was gonna say, if I like had the exact same amount as you, I guess I would get both ten, of them. Ten, yeah. I didn't even think about it. I didn't. Well, I didn't know that was a thing. I we were... was sitting there going, like, well, I guess that could happen. And then how many cards do you have in your tree? One, two, three, four. I have one, two, yeah, three, obviously four, five, more. six. Mm. You win. Shocking. Well, I mean, I don't know. No, you win. <laughs> like, you scored a lot more points than I did. Gotta add this up. Math. You had 88. I had 93. Well, that was a lot closer than I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was, like, obscenely in your favor. Kiki! We're talking about Kiki! Um, so, we have the... Uh, Pretty much the biggest thing we're doing here is we're going to be comparing this to Kodama. Obviously, yeah. Um, well, you know, like, Kiki has been around for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, my opinion of it changed after playing Kodama. Sure. Um, I feel like uh, Kiki by itself is an okay game. I feel like... Uh, it's a print on demand. If you are at drive through cards getting something and you want to throw something in your cart, Kiki's uh, a great choice. It's yeah. not expensive yeah. and it is perfectly pleasant. Um, but then we played Kodama, and I was like, we might as well just get rid of Kiki now because we don't need both games. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> if you have Kodama, and you're wondering, should you get Kigi? The answer is probably not. Like, there's no no reason to do that. Um, unless you really like the aesthetic value of these cards, because that's really all this has going for it. Mm -hmm. is, outside of what Kodama does is um, having a more... Um, Clean isn't right. The right word. It's it's very uh, stylistic. I was gonna say stylized. Yeah. Um, and it's just a different aesthetic. And maybe you don't like the artwork on Kodama, which mm -hmm. is fine. I guess it's possible that someone might not be like into that. So um, that being said, they aren't the same game. Mm -hmm. uh, in Kodama, you uh, you grow a tree over the course of the game, and when you're done. You know, you have this big tree to look at with all these things growing out of it. Yeah. Like, look at this tree I made. You don't have the pruning mechanic. Right. In this game, you are constantly cutting down either your or someone else's tree. Mm -hmm. um, so it's less... Um, at the end of the game, you might end up with just like a stump. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is what I got. And that's 
it was worth the most points. Just cut my whole tree down, and I'm fine with it. Because actually, the theme in this game is you are painters painting mm. trees, but there's still this pruning mechanic, and you can prune each other's trees. Yeah, the theme doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, you're commissioned to paint trees, but, like, why are you... Pruning. Why are you painting on someone else's tree or your own tree? Mm. And then what is... Pruning doesn't even make sense in the context yeah. of, like, yeah. painting. Um, hmm. So the theme for Kodama makes more sense. You're growing a tree to, like, impress some tree spirits or something. Um, how do you... Sorry. I was going to say, you know, if... If that pruning mechanic is something that you really like, too, like, it wouldn't be that hard for that to be a variant for Kodama, either. Um, to reduce, like, large scoring branches in the same way. Um, I guess the problem with that would be... I was going to ask you, how do you feel about the scoring mechanic of Kodama versus this? Um, which is, Kodama is a more long-term mm -hmm. strategy kind yeah. of thing. yeah. Um, whereas this is like, get points as fast as you can, well, you might have a long-term strategy, but really you want to get the most points at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that in general, I prefer Kodama for the way that it scores, but I think that both are really valid in terms of the way they function. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, I could see it being really easy to have make Kadama function a little more like this if you like this gameplay more. Um, uh, the big thing that I like a lot more about Kadama is the way that the scoring cards are something that you start with like a hand of, and you're picking. Is it like three of your five? I think it's three of five. Yeah. Um, over the course of the game that you're playing one each round, each season. Yeah. Where this one, you know, they just kind of randomly happen, and if you get more, then great, and if you don't get more, then, well, too bad. But in this one, it's, you know, like you are making a calculated choice between taking a scoring card or yeah. playing a card to get points in the moment. Mm -hmm. And also with the variant we did, um, we reduced the value of the commission cards in... The context of the original game, the idea is like that's ten points possibly that you could yeah. be getting there, so yeah. it's a big deal. Um, uh, I guess talk about that for a second. You you've played this game a lot more than I have. Once um, before. Once more. Yeah. Okay. Once more. So once um, is not. I played it once more, also with two players. I thought you played more times. Than no. That. Um, but you felt like the. Uh, you felt like the commission cards were worth too much at 10 points, right? I felt like for a two-player game... I don't feel like they're balanced for a two-player game. I felt like there was something off about, like, the score... Everything else about the game scoring-wise is pretty tight. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the amount of points you reel in based on your card play is pretty similar throughout. Um, so... To lose a game by, like, just 10 points because someone had one commission card more than you, it's kind of, like, eh. So I felt like uh, reducing the value of commission cards might be a good idea. Plus, I looked online and there were comments by the designer about doing something, uh, almost the exact same thing we did, if not the same thing we did. I think it was the same thing. I think yeah. that's where you found that variant. Um, so I was like, well, if he suggested that for a, somebody's somebody had a complaint about the two-player game he's like we'll try this then i was fine with trying that because i hadn't tried it before mm -hmm. um i think what we did was better than what you did before the did base before. rules yeah um but then again like i said i've only played this with two players i don't think it's a great two-player game um i feel like mechanically it doesn't make a lot of sense you, like you're sitting there and you're either playing things on your tree or someone else's tree and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of difference is just like whoever happens to have the tree that's going to give you the points in the moment is fine unless you need those things for your commissions. Yeah, if your yeah. commission says something about like don't have pruned cards and you're like, well, I don't want to put this on my tree. Yeah. Um, I don't. That being said, I don't know how it would change with more players. Um, I feel like 
either you'd be playing a game where people would all pile up and put all the cards on the same tree because it keeps growing branches and get points that way, mm. or it would spread out and everybody would be doing their own thing. I feel like it would spread out a lot more because you'd have everybody would be pursuing their commissions. So, you know, you'd have somebody who'd be like, oh, I've got to have the most flowers on my tree. That's only if you're playing the advanced game and everybody starts with a commission. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, my gut feeling is that this game is probably best with three or four. Um, mm-hmm. I'd agree. But uh, having not tried it with three or four, I can't really say that. And I apologize for not trying that before making this video, but yeah. I didn't find anyone who wanted to play Kiki with me. So yeah. that's kind of, um, you know, it doesn't look super fancy. I, I don't feel like it's really that hard to convince people to play the game, but like, you know, it's it's just one of those things where it's a small, it comes small card game. like that, yeah. you know, and... Uh, the rules are printed on the backs of cards, so people look at that and they kind of go, oh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. So. Uh, so, you think that if somebody has Kodama, probably not worth getting Kigi. Yeah. What about the other way around? If you have Kigi, is it worth updating to Kodama? And I, uh, I'm using updating kind of loosely in that sense. I think that Kodama is a more refined version of this game. That, that's that's what I think too, so. Um, and, that, you know, that's, that's the design history shows that they approached uh, Daniel Solis and they said we want to market your game we want to release it you know so it's not a print on demand thing release it retail and they worked pretty closely on developing the concepts to something that they felt would be a better fit for the game's yeah. mechanics and i think they did a pretty good job with it all around um the only thing I would say is that it, it's possible that Kodama doesn't have as much player interaction. It definitely doesn't. Uh, well, I mean, you're still making choices. Like, you look at what that person is doing, yeah. like, okay, well, I gotta take this card so they can't use it kind yeah. of thing. But, but you're never playing on each other's trees, and there's not the pruning aspect, so that's not a thing. Yeah. Um... I would I would say that Kodama is much more of a playing your own game kind of game. So, you know, they're not the same game. But they're very close. They're very close, and I don't think anyone needs to own both. Mm-hmm. So this one's going to, always going to be cheaper. Yeah. If you want something that's really cheap and you want to try it out. And small. Like, and small I mean, it's just like, in this little case. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a pretty... I would not be... I would not discourage anyone from ordering the print-on-demand copy of this, and I'm sure it'll be available on drive through cards yeah. for years. Yeah. Um, when it... If... Uh, I don't know how expensive Kodama is. Yeah, I'm not sure what the retail is on it. Um, I know that it's going to always be more expensive. Yeah. And I... Might not be convinced that it's that much more of a game than Kigi to tell someone, go out and buy Kodama if you're going to buy one of these two. Mm-hmm. It might be a situation where you want to try both if you can and see what you prefer. Um, uh, Kodama has way more cards in it. Yeah. Uh, it has a lot more flexibility for replayability. Yeah. Um, difficulty changes and stuff so that's what you know like i feel like kodama is a more refined version of this and i do recommend that one over them if i had to choose one or the other which is clear because we're you know i'm going to trade this copy away and yeah and keep kodama keep kodama yeah so so what would you write kigi i gave it a six yeah i think that's fair i mean i gave it a six the first time i played it i don't feel like changing it now after yeah. playing it again i'd say that's yeah i'd say six is a pretty good rating for it maybe higher with more people but i don't mm. know so, all right, there you go. So that's Kigi. Um, it's pretty good, uh, but Kodama being so close to the same game may be more worthwhile to you. Um, that being said, like this is cheap, and if you go to drivethroughcards.com, you can find it there. So you know, make your own decision. Yeah. So there you go. Do you have any tree jokes? Uh, leaf. Why don't you get out of here? Me. Yeah, okay. <laughs>